This week's sponsor, KR Couriers and Transport Limited, are best known as being a Northwest based company who deliver newspapers and magazines for local news agents and superstores. You'll find all the information within the description. Please give them a follow. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to the Billy Moore podcast and today's special guest is Sean Tuck. How are we Sean? I'm good, good mate, good thanks. to meet you. Th- yeah, I'm a pleasure, Co- thanks for coming on. Sean is an ex-professional footballer who went to prison for racial remarks or tweets or Twitter. was it tweets? Yeah, on social media. So who did you play for? Um, well, I was a professional footballer for Ackland and Stanley when I was 18. Ackland and uh, Stanley, you were there, mate? Yeah, exactly. Um, no, that's a standard joke. Yeah. <laughs> Something that we heard when we were kids of our milk. Anyway, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I started a one-year pro with them when I was 18. And um, I say I loved my time there. And from there, I think I took a year or two out of football to go partying and stuff with my mates, which is stupid. But um, I'd come to the end of my contract and I knew there was a couple of clubs who wanted to sign me. And um, John Coleman said I was eager to arrange something. And I just said it's okay, like obviously um, I wanted to spend time with my mates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So growing up, uh, what was that like for you? Um, well, for the lads, I always wanted to be a footballer. It was obviously heartbreaking, but I've been through bigger things in life than that previous to that, and obviously in later life. Yeah, well, you ended up in prison, didn't you? So yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit further on. Uh, and you know, you had a promising career in football. Mm-hmm. But what I want to know, what was it like growing up? What was the contributing factors that led you to to feel so passionately the way you did mm-hmm. uh, regarding these these tweets? So just so the audience gets to know who you are and what you're about, and you know you're from Norris Green, it's a mm-hmm. place yeah. in Liverpool. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what what that was like growing up. Um, well, my upbringing was was no different to anyone else's. Um, I was a, I'm the youngest of three kids. It was different as a man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, I'm the youngest of three kids. Uh, I've got an older brother, Sammy, and an older sister, Julie. And I was, I was, I was raised well by, by good parents who are now both sadly deceased like. But um, I lost my mum when I was 15. And I think I think then subconsciously, a little bit of anger started to creep into, obviously, into me as a person. Before that, I was, yeah, I was always outgoing as a lad. I was never nasty. Um, but obviously, through loss and um, grief and stuff, I started going down wrong paths. From mm. what I'd say, I'd probably say from up after I left Acton and Stanley when I was about nineteen. But little things were probably creeping in around around the time my mum died when I was fifteen years old. That's a young age, isn't it? So that's yeah, a, yeah. You know, I, 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 you know, I couldn't imagine losing your mum or or a, or, a, or a parent at mm. an early age, especially um, especially like. As as you go on in life, and well, it's it's well, as 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 you said yourself, it's it's a, it's a massive thing to go through. I I wouldn't wish it on nobody. I never had. I've got no words. It's it's, it's, it's describe how I feel. To be fair, you know, it's it's quite tough. So, how did that affect you? You know, with apart from the anger. Uh, well, I don't, well, my my dad was pretty tough. Well, we we both parents were tough. They were tough like characters. Um, and I always remember when my mum died, I was in, um, obviously I'd come home and everyone was in the house. Mm. I, the night before she was in the hospital, and i come home and obviously unaware why right, there was hundreds of people in my house. Yeah. I'm thinking, this is strange, the house is chocker. Yeah. So I said to my dad, can we go and see my mum today? And he said, come here, so he had a word and he obviously told, told me she'd passed away. And I always remember, right, obviously, going back to when I was saying, my dad was obviously a tough character. And this resonates with me today still. I, I cried my eyes out in the back garden, and he was obviously there was family about my dad's mates, my mum's mates, her yeah, family, and whoever else like the local community within within my house. And um, I was sobbing, and he, I was remember my dad saying to me, um, "Stop crying." And um, at the time, like this was the way my dad was. I mean, it was tough love. Yeah, but it's. And I, at the time, I probably felt like I needed like an arm around the shoulders. You know what I mean? And telling me everything was going to be fine. And I was told. And I, I don't need, I resented my dad for this at the time. 
and I did for years after because I couldn't believe why he'd say it to me. Oh, understandable, but, yeah. But now I look back and I think it was the right thing to say to me. I just, I just, I couldn't accept it then. When he told me to stop crying and all that, he said, stop crying, um, it's not going to bring your mum back. And I thought it was cruel, do you know what I mean? Because mm. I'd, I'd been told five seconds previously that she'd passed away. And at 15, it was, it was I was here like an ammo blow. It's, even still today, like, I'm 35 now. Mm. I lost my mum when I was 15. So I've had longer without her. Two decades, yeah. Done with it. And it's it's the little things like lo- losing it and losing my dad was bad. But the the, the worst thing I find now is it's because I'm I'm a father myself. Yeah. And they never got to meet my kids. And my sister and brother both got two kids each. Yeah. And um, they both got to see their kids coming into the world, play a part in their life. And then I go into fatherhood and they're not there for me. And obviously, I, that, that ain't their fault, do you know what I mean? But it's a little thing, do you know what I mean? To be able to go to the house and, and show my mum and dad off to my kids because yeah. I'm forever talking about my mum and dad to my kids and it's just blank for them because they, they've got nothing to cling to or yeah. attach themselves to. Yeah, I was thinking then when you said to me, when you, when you said to me about uh, your dad saying don't cry, I mean, that was like a big thing back then for me, you know, you couldn't cry and yeah. you couldn't feel, you couldn't express any kind of emotion yeah. and I feel now today that's wrong now if you need to cry yeah. you need to cry because that's healing yeah you know that's growth well you, you've got to go through that stage yeah. that process yeah. yeah I agree with you. I'm a product of that yeah like I've grown up to be like like dead tough and I, I've said things to like friends family do you know what I mean it, when they've probably been down to like basically toughen up mm. because that's how I was taught and don't get me wrong I've got two kids of my own and I, I'm I'm not like that with them the way my dad was was with me. I'm a, obviously a more caring and stuff because I understand. But it's other things. Do you know what I mean? Like when mates have been suffering or like they've lost jobs because of going out and partying and all. That, and I'm on vacation and all. That, and I, I I never look at like the mitigating circumstances of why they're doing these things and and whatever else. I try and understand, but this the way I've been raised. Like it's it's there's always some behaviour. There's always something that contributes mm. to the way. The way you behave or the outcomes that yeah, you, yeah. you you bring about and the consequences that are there, there's always something mm. that's in the back burner. Yeah. You know, obviously, like losing your mum is quite traumatic. You know, that motivates you though to carry on and play football. Yeah, because that's <clears> something like you know, it's a dream of yours, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you, to be a, a, a an international football player. Well, to, to to play football, do you know what I mean? Obviously, I I don't laugh for personal reasons. But it was always to go home and to tell my mum. Like when I played for the Western kids team, that was a, like a local amateur side when I was from 12 to 16. Yeah. Every time I went home, like if we won a cup final and scored at Attic, I'd be straight in to tell my mum because I knew she'd be proud of me. Yeah. And the day I signed a professional contract, when I went home, she wasn't there for me to tell her. Yeah. And as you say, like the, the circumstances around yeah, behavioural patterns and whatever else. And I try, I try not to make mistakes. Uh, I try not to make excuses for the mistakes I've made. Yeah. And I don't want to say I've done this because I lost my mum and I lost my dad. No, you are here to, to, to justify your behaviour yeah, because no, you've got choices and yeah, and, 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 poor decisions. I'm big enough made. to know what's yeah. right and wrong, Bill, do you know what I mean? And I, I live and die by my actions and I regret a lot of things I've done. So how long was you playing professional football for? For the season. For the season. One season, yeah. One year contract. I, had a, I think I had an option of another year, but... I, I, Actually, I was. I just wanted to go um, party and stuff with my mates. When I was, I, I travelled every day. I was in all the squads. I must have made. I'd say five or six appearances. I played in the FA Cup and stuff. And when I was going to London on a Friday, travelling down with the squad, we were training at like Chelsea, training ground, yeah. West Ham, other other grounds, and then we'd having pre-match meals. I I was living the life, and I was thinking this is everything I wanted to do. And then I'd wake up on a Saturday morning. I was room, sh- room sharing with a fella called Mike Flynn, and he was like, he was a top pro, been around all the football league, all his life, played at Wembley, uh, many promotions, and he was, he was, I think he was about thirty eight, and I was eighteen. Do you know what I mean? So I, he, he was like reading books, and he <laughs> ringing his wife and kids, and I was probably wanting to run around the hotel to see if there's any women to try and get in the room. <laughs> Do you mm. know what I mean? But uh, I think we made some Saturday morning, and like they, they be coming out to parties. So, you know, just wallop this woman or like this, that and the other. And I used to think, wow, 
it's mad to you know what I mean but because yeah. I, I wasn't doing that and then the second and knew I had the chance to do it I took it like to you know I me mean? yeah well you, you just didn't pursue it any further no, no well, I, well I, I probably took a year and a half two years out but not, not from not playing do you feel it was because the party and you know that you were involved with started to see have an impact on on your performance if I'd probably say yes or most physically most, most as of the, well as mentally yeah, yeah obviously physically it will take its toll but I felt like, felt like it never never ever affected me no. like I could go like when when I, I'd went to Marine when I went back playing that was obviously semi pro and stuff but I could go partying yeah Thursday night cocaine booze for two nights with no kit and turn up on a Saturday and do the business and lads who plays with would, would like think how do you do that and me, me, I'd forever clash with my dad. Obviously, my mum had passed away by then. I'd clash with my dad constantly. And he'd be saying, you know, um, why are you going out? Why are you doing this? Why? But I was one of them. I couldn't keep still. Yeah. So me, I don't get me wrong. Like a cat on a hot sand when you're young, aren't you? Yeah, so, so when, when I'd always train hard. I'd, I'd, when we were at training, I'd make sure I'd work as hard as anyone else. I was as dedicated as anyone mm. when I was at football. Yeah. But... I've got like an addictive personality, so uh, like out of out of football, I'd like to, I used to go over the road there to um, JJ's the pool hall, and I I used to like to you know go for a game of pool, but a game of pool would turn into like like two days on on the Charlie uh, mm. and then booze and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And then back to people's houses, and then coming home Saturday morning, to my knee full off my dad to get me kit bag, and then I, I'd go and scott. I, I'd done it one time. I was out. I was out. I went out on the. the I might turn the went Thursday night. I might turn stay from training for the game of pool. Stay stay on the Charlie on the booze, and it, I was out Thursday night all Friday, like I had net, still sitting in the same clothes with my mate, and and it, I went home about ten o'clock Saturday morning. I had to uh, meet me lift in the strand and on the screen for about twelve, mm. and I was like that. I once I knew it was time to go home. I'd question all my all my life choices. Yeah, I'd be thinking because the people who I was doing it with could then go to bed, or they were unemployed. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And I was thinking, you're going, you're going to play in front of a crowd now. What are you doing? You're a fucking absolute dickhead. And one time I'd done it, I, I think I scored a thirteen minute after on the back of no sleep, and he, I'd fell out with my dad in the morning to the game, and I said, well, don't fucking bother coming to watch me. Mm. I'd made it with him and all that. I got my kit bag fucked off. And then uh, one of my mates seen me walking through the stands with a bottle of champagne under my hand, mm. um, under my arm, and a match ball under the other, where it's called Attic. And he just said to him, You're unreal. So I, the longer I got away with it, the more I've done it. Yeah. I thought I was untouchable. I thought, I don't need to go to sleep to perform. Do you know what I mean? It catches up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm 35 now. Yeah. I'm still playing. And You're still it, playing now? Yeah. In my me, in me head, I think I'm 18 when I'm on the pitch. You'll do well, And the body's telling me. You're not 18 no more, Sean, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The wear and tear on, obviously injuries and all, I take it so, but it's, I, I never looked after myself when I was younger. And my dad always said to me, go to the gym. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I used to go to a gym not far from here, the muscle lab, and yeah. it, I, I do hit sessions and I loved it. Yeah. But back then, there was nothing like that. My dad wanted me to go to the gym to run on a treadmill, to lift weights, and I always found that, um, I found that boring. I couldn't think of it. I'd much rather go to the pub, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I say, I say live and die by my choices, do it on choices. And that's it, and you've made a few poor choices in your life yeah, by the sounds yeah. of things, and we spoke in length, and I said to you, you know, I'm, I'll make a decision whether we get you on, and, and you might get a bit of backlash from yeah. the audience. You yeah. said, you know, you're here not to justify your... Yeah. It's, so tell me, right, because you, you're, at, you know, you, you're at the headlines, and you were big in the headlines mm -hmm. for the racial remarks that mm -hmm. you you made on Twitter. Yeah. Tell us about that and what happened and why, what was this, what was behind it? I, it'd be hard to justify what was behind it. I, I, I was, I was angry because of what had happened. Do you know what I mean? I was well, tell us, tell us what happened. I think it'd come home, I was coming home from work. Obviously, I, I'd said something different in court, I said I was drinking all day. That was the time, you know what I mean? It's yeah. the time to justify my actions, which was sad, really. But I weren't prepared to stand behind that and say like I was sober and I meant everything I said. What was, what age was you at this time? I'd say 26, 20, you, 26, 27. Was your dad still alive at the time? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, we did, no, we just started. 
he died a so year you've before. You've lost your mother. You've lost your father. So, so the, the, the contributing factors was, if, if like say when I said about partying and stuff, yeah. my dad would be there to say, "What are you fucking doing?" Yeah. He, no one was there no more. Yeah. I, I, and like say, I've got an older brother and sister, and obviously I let them down. I let the family down. I let obviously the people around me down. And but if they would get on my case, like my brother would would be disappointed in me. Mm. He'd look at me sad and go, "Like what?" And that killed me more than anything. But my sister was like a banshee. Yeah, you fucking cunt. And yeah. So I'd, I'd say, you fucking talking to, do you know what I mean? And I'd be arguing back with her. Call her fucking all the slags and whatever, going, fuck off, you slag. And she'd be saying, you're a fucking twat. Because we were very similar, me and my sister. Yeah. Where my, brother, my brother's, um, he's a bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? He's, he's laid back more. He observes, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't get involved where me and my sister would like cause... So he'll think before he... Uh, yeah, we cause murder in empty yeah. house, me and her, yeah. like... I don't know what my sister's the same. <laughs> yeah, so what's, so what, what's, what's, what's been going on then? What happened? So, so I, was, I was coming home from work and obviously it, the news had broken. It was all over like the news and whatever else. And so I'm scrolling through my timeline on what Facebook. What was all over the news you need to tell us? Um, right, um, obviously a soldier had, had been um, acted to death in Woolwich. Lee Rigby? Yes, yeah. Lee Rigby. And obviously I, I wasn't aware at the time who it was, but obviously we, we, all, we, all, we all knew... Who they were going to be, like the, the attackers of what it descent or whatever fate they followed. And uh, as I found throughout the day, I, got, I was getting angry and angry and I couldn't believe it. And I was writing things, saying, um, and there's certain things that I do stand behind. And I don't mean like the racist stuff and stuff or storming mosques. And I don't stand behind that. It's, it, I mean, what I do stand behind is like them type of people, not Muslims in general, because I know there's a lot of. A lot of good Muslims, hard working Muslims who are here to better their life. And like anyone who wants to do that, no, I welcome with open arms. But these people who are coming to the country to um, to, to cause havoc on you, me and, and everyone else they can. And it's only just happened recently as well. The yeah. women's hospital. Uh, we'll go back to that. But anyway. I, I was I was enraged, like and I was writing things and and, and people were at like half egging me on, and that's not an excuse either, do you know what I mean? But they're like, you know, going this right, lad, do you know what I mean? What are you saying there? I'm with you and all that, do you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, yeah, it's right and all that. And it, as I watch a few of your podcasts, and you always mention about ego. Mm. And, I, and I had people massage your mind, you know what I mean? I'd be going out to West Arby Village around the time it was happening, and I was all over so the you news. you feel like you were easily led? Yeah, but, but then I also think that's a, a weak excuse. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because... I know life from wrong, Bill. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I was brought up good and proper. So I was I was continuing what I was doing, knowing it was wrong. But writing these tweets. Yeah, but not giving a fuck because yeah. the, what, what would be consequences? I'd lost my mum and dad, so um, if I was to go to jail, so be it. If, if I was to go out to a pub and it, it, it kick off, then so, so be you it. Just, so internally you felt then raised uh, <clears throat> and this was a justifiable reason for you to make these yeah. racial comments at, at the time at yeah. the time yeah no we, we spoke about this and i said i'll there'll be a few tough questions coming yeah no that's, me, you that's know, because, fine you know you told me prior to coming on that that was not you behind no, all no. Those well it, obviously your, obviously it was i i know obviously them. physically yeah. it was but yeah. mentally and in the state you was in and, yeah. and you know looking in eyesight you wouldn't have done that no right? you're, you're in a place of, especially be parents with you yeah, they yeah. they didn't murder me. You felt like you've had you had no like guidance from your family yeah. or no support and no people going look behave. Yeah, you're a loose cannon, so to mm. speak. Yeah, and you've reacted, mm. and you've come out with all these comments. It's which obviously put you in prison, mm -hmm. um, and as you're in the news, they're actually bigger than the royals at the time. Yeah, right? so yeah. What happened there? Well, like like say, I, I, I didn't realize that like the. the the, the the severity of what it's done. You didn't realise how <coughs> how severe these consequences. Yeah. So I just thought I'm writing things and everyone's commenting on it and whatever else. And, and how many comments was you getting? Thousands of retweets and yeah. So that's so up. like with Facebook and whatever else. Like I'd have to add you. Yeah. To be your friend and but on pe on fa uh, Twitter. Yeah. People just follow you. Do you know what I mean? So they could so. When the tweet started, I, I'd had, I wouldn't say a massive following, I'd say a big following. Mm. Obviously, two 
Peter's on another screen, whatever else. Everyone who knows me over the city through yeah. football and whatever else. And then when the tweet started, I'd go off my Twitter for five minutes, go yeah. back on, and it'd say, you've got 125 more followers. Go back off, come back on. You had 300 more followers. Um, my notifications were saying you've had 500 retweets on, on this one tweet alone. Yeah. So, obviously, not knowing how it worked, if, say, you got 20,000 followers and I write something on Twitter and you retweet it, 20,000 your followers see that. Yes. And then they might retweet it and they could have 5,000 followers. And then before you know it, it's it's gone round the world. It's viral. Yeah. It, it was it was on the news and um, but is it Al Jazeera? Mm. That's like a massive news station. Whatever whatever that is. Yes. And I was playing for Witten Albion at the time, and their their manager was a top copper, Cheshire Police, and um, Brian Pritchard, and he rung me, and he he said, eh, "Whatever you do, Sean, stop doing what you're doing, and delete everything you've done." And I was that arrogant. I said, "I said I'm not I'm not deleting it." This is your manager. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a copper. Yeah. So I said, I'm like I said, I've that ignorance and arrogant. I said, I'm I'm not a, I'm not deleting them. Mm. I said, I said, I'm fucking stand behind this. I said, mm. I'm, I said, you I'm, believed in what you wrote. Yeah. At the time, yeah. And I, I knew subconsciously, I knew, I knew I'd gone over the top on some of them, mm. but I was that angry. I thought, no, why should I fucking delete it? And um, he, he, within a couple of phone calls, he said to me, "Mercy, sir, please look for you." And then he said, um, if I was you, I'd hand yourself in. And again, I said, no. I said, if they want me, I, I think we were, I was, I, was, I was at the house at the time. Yeah. And he, he said to me, I'd, I'd advise yourself to hand yourself in. And I was like, no. I said, if they want me, they can come and get, come and do what they're paid to do. They can mm. come and get me. So I went out that night <coughs> and I was in West Derby Village. And like I say, I was around the bend. And um, I, I looked at my phone. I was in a mate of mine, Anthony Johnson. And I said, I've had about 20 missed calls, yeah, of my sister and my brother. I said, that, that's unusual. Why are they ringing me that, that many times? Not like, mm. you no know, one phone call. There's, there's red flags going on there. I was living with me. my brother at the time. Yeah. My, brother, my brother's uh, Mrs. Lynn and uh, my nephew and niece. And um, the police, a couple of police fans had gone to their house <coughs> to get me. And I was out dancing in uh, the years, I think it was, in West Harvey Village. And I thought... Shit, I, I thought I couldn't enjoy the rest of my night. They they told me to come home right away. The police are here, and again, being a dickhead, I, I said no. Do you want me? I'm on the dance floor in the years. So one thing led to another, and all that, and then I was paranoid. Then, do you know what I mean? So I, I got I got a taxi from the air now to West Derby to the Saint Anthony Police Station, and he um, handed myself in, and he just said, "You're not in the system. Go home." <laughs> So I said, you have just gone to kick my door down. I said, I, um, I said, obviously, you are looking at me. He said, well, just go home. You'll get a knock in the morning. Yeah. And then in the morning, I had um, fellas in suits at me door, like. CID. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was serious. Then he, I opened the door, and one of them said, are you sure and so? I said, yeah. I went to put my hand out to shake her. And he said, I'm not shaking your hand. You're the scumbag. You said that he did? Yeah. yeah. So, I, so, so I, um, I, I said, oh, no fucking scumbag. I said, the scumbags, the the lads who were standing in the shops 24 hours a day causing misery to our people walking past, who were scared to go and get the local shop, do you know what I mean? Mm. And the smoking weeds and the riding, like, motorbikes. And I said, I've worked all my life. Yeah. I said, I've had a couple of skirmishes. Like, I, I was arrested for possession of cocaine. But I, I was never a scumbag. I've worked all my life. Even when I come out of school and I was 16, my dad, my dad So how did that me. make you feel when you've got a... A police officer standing at your door, calling you a scumbag. I know you. you well, know. that made me worse. That made me angrier. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, I was never a scumbag. Do you know what I mean? So I, I wouldn't accept that. Hmm. I made a mistake, and that was the, that was the, the main thing. Was I made a mistake, and I was yeah. punished, and rightly so. So you felt you, you felt like you know the anger was boiling up to a point where. Did you class it as freedom of speech? Yeah. At the time, yeah. Because I thought, time. well, I should be entitled to my views. But my views were extreme. Yeah. I, I, I think views like that, there's no place for them in society. And with these, with these views, with these views uh, documented in the papers, what you said or on the news? Um, I'm not, it was all online. Like on, 
to be yes, no, but obviously someone created the website and everything for me and he had all my tweets on there but I think people are just I don't, I don't know if, if it was in like the papers I think in, in the papers it said the football had called for um, mosques to be gassed and bombed out so there was there was snippets of what it put yeah so that's what you'd said yeah that's a, that you'd said you felt that they should be gassed and bombs out yeah um, no, it was down to all the angers. Yeah, I, 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 on one of my tweets, like, and I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this, like, don't you? I said I was going to go ahead and cut Muslim kids up, but like I saw a machete, I think it was. Now, I've got two kids of my own builds, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'd never lay a finger, I wouldn't lay a finger on anyone, yeah. an adult. There's have to be a reason for me to do that. Yeah. If, if someone like to do a punch or something, I'll always defend myself, but. I'd never like go out and start start a well, fight. You can understand, can't you, Sean, the feelings that the public are gonna. Oh yeah, yeah. Feel, like even like you're saying it now. I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's powerful. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Saying things about kids and yeah. wanting to cut them up and yeah. You know, I you, you couldn't even imagine what that space you're in to be writing that stuff down, um, and putting it out there for the. I, I felt for an audience. Yeah, I felt the worse the worse I went, the the better they become. If you know, and I don't mean the better in a, in a, like in like a good way. I I meant like you no know, like like in a bravado way and an ego way. People would look at me as like a more of a nastier person, and which is sort of bollocks. Really, do you know what I mean? Because I'm I'm not the, well I'm not them person. Would you class yourself as like a patriot, a British patriot? So do you feel like you can't celebrate your own flag without being? Judged or well, put it this way: I I I love this country. I I, I don't like the royal family. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm not. They're not, the, I, they're not the most popular. I, I'm not one of them who like um, who loves the Queen or not like that. I I I don't like none, none of that. But I, I'm proud of who I am and where I'm from and and of, of our heritage and stuff. And the one thing that gets under my skin: if if people want to come to me for a better life. Then it's to their own, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's when people are coming here, Bill. Do you know what I mean? And kids, so it's, it's, kids it's, are it's, dying in no, concerts and, and, and stuff. I understand, well, it's, 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 it's fucking not on. It's not on when you've got uh, extremists turning up. Yeah. With bombs strapped to themselves. Mm. Blowing up families and kids and terrorising communities mm. and having people living in fear. That is fucking yeah. bang on, right? Um, I, I get it. And I get the outrage... And it's going to be quite ambivalent with people mm-hmm. hot and cold, how they feel towards that. Now I've never been against any, any kind of like, um, say racism. We'll, yeah, call it. we'll yeah. just we'll just broaden the the horizons. I, I believe you know I've lived all around the world and with different cultures yeah. and I've, you know I've actually changed my name to Yusuf Muhammad and I'd be I've yeah. sh- sat with Muslims uh, for over a year in a cell. Yeah, and read. The Quran, and I questioned them because I had the same kind of mindset as everybody else. Backpacks, people getting blown up, uh, they're not to be trusted. And I sat with these these Muslims who I shared a cell with, and asked questions. And yeah. I said, well, "What's this all about? And why just do this?" And they were looking at me like I was like they were baffled, and they said, "Look, we as Islam." It's a faith. It's 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 peace. It means peace. Mm -hmm. It's it's not. You've got extremists in every (coughs) walk of life. Yeah. You know we have in in in, you know whether with Catholics. Yeah. You know religion is 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 a war on its own. Yeah. And it's it's fucking really it's really, but I felt these were like the most beautiful people you could ever be with and around. So I, I but prior to that, my judgments and my opinions were like of what I'd read in the papers or what I'd heard from other people. I had to physically sit down and speak to them. And you told me something on the phone, which was quite warm um, and moving about your doctor. Yeah, well, um, when I played for Witten Albion, the club doctor, he, he like he sadly passed away now. His, his name was VJ Antwell, and he, he was a Muslim. And um, when I got like obviously when I done what I'd done, arrested, jailed, and whatever else. In jail, he was on my mind. I was thinking because. Well, obviously, he's passed away now, but mm. he was one of the nicest men you could meet. Mm. And he, he was not but nice to me. And I thought, how am I, how am I going to face him now? What am I, how am I even going to look him in the eye after what I've done? 
And when I went back to the club, I was paranoid. I was panic, panicking over everything. And um, I, I, off my own back, I said, I said to um, the manager, because we had about three or four black players too in the squad, and it was nothing to do with anything about black people. My problem was with like Muslims and Muslim extremists at the time. But I, I said to the manager, could, could you round everyone up and get them round the table like this? And he was like, what for? I said, like, I want to say sorry to some person. I want to be like you know genuine, mm. and he said he said you sure about this? He said no, because you're under no pressure to do this. You know if you want to do this, this stuff you're on back, and some might accept your apology. I said well, I'm willing to ride it out like and see where it goes. If people don't accept my apology, that's fine, because I've started to apologise since I come out of jail, and obviously some people will never have it. Some people will. Did you have a tough time when you went away? No. No. In, and I don't want that to come across like, no, I was a big man. Do you know what I mean? I know you spent time in jail. No, I'm, what I'm and saying, I know you, you could back it up, like. How did you feel, like, being portrayed in the public eye as, you, as a racist? That, right? that, that's on me, because I've got family who are black. Yeah. Yeah, I've got family who are different colour skin so to you me. Put, you're portrayed in the paper as a racist, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you're going to a prison and you're going to face people. Yeah. From different races. Well, I did that, did, how, what was going through your mind well, at the I, time? I, I was, I wouldn't say I was scared, I was concerned. I've never been to jail before. Mm. I've been to visit family in jail and um, derived from the court in their sweat box to, to Walton. I just found funny. In 2013? Yeah, I, I was just laughing, thinking, <coughs> I, I can't, not laughing in, in like a, in an arrogant way, more in disbelief that I found myself in this situation. Thought you're actually going to jail now, Sean. Time to quit the big man act. Do you know what I mean? Because there's going to be people in there who, mm. are, who are actually the big man. And if you try it on with them, you know, you'll, you'll be fucking, you'll be better than water to them. Mm. So going in there and all that, and I landed in A wing. That was an induction wing. Yeah. I was there for two nights. First night I was on my own, and then second night someone come in, and I had chair with them. And they were okay, and then I got moved to F wing then. Got my bag over my shoulder with my belongings and um, come in, they walk in the door, glanced off. The first person I seen was Stephen French, the mm. devil. Mm. <laughs> Frenchy. And I thought, here we go. And was then, he at your door? No. Um, he, he, he was, um, he, I think he was on the fives. I, I, I got put on the threes and I thought to myself, because oh. obviously, I know a lot of people say a lot of things about him, but he, when you first lay eyes on him, he's, he looks a menacing man. Mm. Bit like yourself, but um, he was about six foot five, and I thought, what, what am I, what am I actually going to say? If, if he knows why I'm in here, am I going to fucking cause here, or am I going to just fucking front it and say this, this is why I'm here? Yeah. And if, if he gives me a smack, then it, so be it. But um, I actually t- to get to speak to him as well once. Mm. But, um, we we were doing um, like education in there, so obviously people were obviously doing a longer sentence. Oh, we're working in the canteen and whatever else. I got asked if I wanted to do English and maths, yeah. and I thought, I thought I'll do it to pass the time. Like so, um, he he was in the next next classroom to me, and I come out for the best, and he's come out, and I thought, oh no, and he he said, how are we, lad? I said, I'm sorry, mate. How are you? And he's like, oh, he said, um, and he glanced into that our, our class. We had a teacher called Patience, and she was she was half decent, like you know, and all the lads were hitting on her, so yeah. um. He was saying, oh, fucking hell, she, she's all right, isn't she, and all that. I said, I said, no, I've said all the lads are beasting off her in there, like, and that was the only conversation I had with him, but going in there was a bit of an eye-opener. Mm. And, um, but but because of past experiences, like, lowering my mum down in the coffin when I was 15, seeing my dad take his last breath, I felt like I was ready for everything that life could, there's nothing, there's nothing that can bring so me to my knees anymore. Your mum, what age was she when she passed away? Was For, she 49. She was only young, yeah. 49. And, and your dad? I think my dad, my dad might have been, might have been 50, 55 or something, yeah, 56 so or something like that. You've lost them both early, at yeah. an early age, haven't yeah. you? Now you find yourself in, in carcerated in HMP Walton. Yeah. She's a shit old. Yeah. Right. And I wouldn't suggest going to jail to anyone because, you know, no matter what, it's it's not a good place to be in. No. You know, and you're coming across different characters in there. Yeah. And are you reflecting over? Now, this is something that is important because I think if you go to jail, 
and you're willing to change, you'll sit there in your shell because there's no one in there with you but you, yeah. right? And you'll reflect on your behaviour and you'll ask yourself a few tough questions yeah. about whether you want to change. Yeah. Now, for me, I was really young when I went away um, and I didn't even think about questions, didn't mm. even think about consequences. But the older I got, and like you said, the older I got and the more mature I became, I started to really think about my future yeah. and what what I was going to provide com my community or uh, how beneficial I could be instead of being a drain on society yeah. and a degradation, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and people like just... Because my mum, I'm, I'm not Mother Teresa, I was... My mum lived in shame and embarrassments and I, yeah. there was a lot of, you know, a lot of doors closed on me, but I reflected when I was away and I thought about what I did, you know, on a, a few occasions... And I was willing to change. So did you ever sit in your shell and go, you know what? Why did I say that about these kids? Why did I say about this, about these mosques? And make it personal to a minority. Yeah. I still say it to myself today. Yeah. Eight years later. I'm still searching like for forgiveness from people. Do you know what I mean? It's like when I'd sign for footy, managers would ring me and say, like, we definitely want to get you in or we give you X amount of money. And then he'd come back and he'd say, like, we can't do it to change my moan and love it because of the trouble it might bring and the backlash. So you uh, ruined your career or any chance of a career? Yeah, as, as, as good as, as <coughs> to progress into it to, like, a next level, yeah. The Premiership stuff. Yeah, well, obviously, all the football league and that. But um, just before I went to jail, I almost ended up back in the football league, but Ackleton League 2. Mm. I just scored 33 league goals for Skin. I got voted best player in, in, in the whole league by all the other managers mm. and um, they come in for me and I'd have been a professional again and um, the deal, deal didn't happen because I think Scam wanted £10,000 up front and Ackleton couldn't pay it so and the worst thing about us I was here trying not to go drag it on too long my dad had died and I, I continued playing for Scam they told me you need to take time off grieve be with your family and I said no I said, taking time off doesn't bring my dad back. And that goes back to when my mum died, when he told me, stop crying. Yeah. And I felt like if I'd have took time off, my dad, no, obviously he's died. He'd have been looking down at me, calling me all the quilts mm. under the sun. So you don't feel like as Like I was weak. Yeah, like so... Why aren't you on to footy? And this is something that needs to be addressed because you're not weak, right? If you no. To feel vulnerable and, and feel grief yeah. and process that. Yeah. It's a part of life. It's a part of life cycle. Mm. You know, it's it's. I've lost my dad and, and I've grieved. It's yeah. been painful. Yeah. Some people can put a plaster on a disaster and just avoid any any feelings in that area, but it will creep up and it I've will get you. I've done that for so long, mate. You know, and I'm like, you know, I've I've really I've I've been and and there's people on this podcast who you can you'll see the same. It's been times when I've wanted to write things and I've actually started to write things, whether it's been an expert or I've wrote a status because yeah. of the way I felt at yeah. that time and I'm writing something and as I'm writing it, I'm deleting it as well. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'm writing it. Many times it. I've done the I'm same. I'm writing it, I'm deleting it. And then, you know, the other time I've sent something and I thought, oh, why did I do it? I don't want to pull it out the air. No, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Right. But it's, it, what's, what's, got you is you've done it you've posted it and the arrogance and how did the court see that you know the uh, I always remember when I was in court and uh, the judge I think her name was Miriam Shelby was this in the crown um, the magistrate yeah um, and what was your charges um, menacing messages threats to kill endanger life um, there's a few others there's a few others that did I don't know and um, every time I spoke in court <clears throat> this judge just rolled her eyes at me and it, didn't, it, fucking, it got right under my skin like, like a bit of a snoozy twat no. but I was there for the reason you know what I mean I didn't expect her to look at me with any sort of respect and think that was like I was a genuine nice person because she just met me and only heard things about me and, no. but it, 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 was, it, it was a horrible time it, um, and like I say when I was saying when, when it it is nearly San for Atkinson again the tear fell through because Skem wouldn't allow me to go. And when they told me to say time out from football, mm. I continued to play because I felt getting them in the playoffs 
was more important than good even. Mm. My dad went to hospital on a Thursday and we were sold as a family. He'll be dead by Monday. I played on the Saturday scores in a one all draw. He died on, on the Monday. I played on the Tuesday scored at Attach in a in a in a four one win. And lads were look I, I could tell the lads were looking at me at football. I couldn't believe why I, that I was there. But this this was the character I'd created through my dad. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like if I if I'd have sat in the house the voices would have been running through my head when he told me to stop crying, your mum your mum won't be coming back, no matter how much you cry. I'd have had the voice in my head off my dad saying, um, why haven't you gone to footy? I'm not coming back. Do you know what I mean? That's fucking weak. You should have been there for your teammates. You've let your team down. So, so I bottled everything up and went to footy. And then at the end of the season, when it was my chance to go back as a professional footballer in the football league this time, Skem, Skem shut the door on my face. Did he? Yeah. Do you, believe, do you believe you were conditioned to and brought up in an environment which was like racist? Because we do hear it in our areas, like growing up for myself as well, you know. I've, I've heard things as a I kid. lived in a white area. And yeah. Then we moved to the South End and I found it quite difficult because I felt like a minority. Yeah. Now we understand why uh, I felt that way because I know what it's like to be on the receiving end. Yeah. Um, so did you ever like... Was you in the earshot of all this in the house? Was I've, you, I've, heard, I've heard things when I was a kid, yeah. So when you're a kid, you're growing up. So all this is is playing yeah, a, a role and, in and your and life. And again, this is not an excuse because I, yeah. I knew life from long. But as they say, when, when you're born, you know nothing. Yeah. Everything's taught. So I've heard things when I was a kid. And things were different back then, do you know what I mean? It wasn't seen as big racism, do you know what I mean? Like, obviously I was born in 86. Yeah. But obviously, stories you hear from like the seventies, like early seventies or sixties, early seventies, eighties, like a, a lot of a lot, a lot of working class white parents, w- w- no, would say things that would. Oh yeah, that's definitely yeah. It's, Do you know what I mean? Like, like you're yeah, black, you're, you're, you're black like, this, you're black that, yeah. and I I I I remember hearing stuff when I was a kid. I grew up with a lot of racist comedians on the TV yeah. and. But it, what I, and I say, like say, I've seen, like say, you say Chubby Brown and all. He, he was a racist comedian, and I, I loved him when he was young because I, I, I never, t- I never took anything. I did. I thought he was funny. Personal, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't. Yeah. People get offended now easily. So like, if someone says something, like, like someone will pipe up and say, you know, that's wrong. That, but oh, don't get me wrong, racism, full stop, is wrong. No, but, I, I agree. Racism should but be. But things sta- can be said in jest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like casual racism. Like, if I was black and someone made it like a quip of something like that, knowing the way I am, it wouldn't offend me. Not Nothing ever offends me. Mm. Unless it was about my mum and dad. Mm. Or my kids. You can say whatever you want about me. Now, when I've been in football, I've been called, you're smackers, you're scouse cunt, you're house robbing this. I've never robbed a house in my life, do you know what I mean? Because it's stereotypical of being a scouser, isn't it? So when I was playing against teams in Manchester, I, I got the eyes of abuse and, and I loved it. I thrived on it, and I always thought that 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 made me go up a gear. Do you know what I mean? Mm. When I was on the pitch, I think like I'll, I'll fucking show you. And um, I, I've I've been racially abused too on a on a football pitch by a black lad I played against, mm. and I just laughed. He, I think he called me a white cunt or something like that. Horrible white cunt. I said I said that's fine. I said I'm white and I'm a cunt. And I'm mm. proud of who I am. But if if you if you put the shoe on the other foot, and I just said it back to him. To be an old, old, totally different thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where you're free to say whatever you want to me. The only time I've ever reacted is when I, when I was up with Nalby and come out of jail and they'd warn me, no more trouble. And I yeah. promised them and give them my word, I'd never get in trouble again. No social media, no nothing. And so, someone said, sent my brother a tweet. It was an FC United fan of two coffins and uh, tweeted, tweeted to my brother saying, hey, Ask your Sean. I was mum and dad's, and my brother sent me, and uh, I'd promised with an Albion I was never going to get in trouble again. Mm. I was straight on Twitter. I got his Twitter handle, found out who he was, and I fired into him. I said... So he hooked you? you, threw, you yeah. And you threw all that energy back? Yeah. So this now I look back now, right, Bill? Yeah. I wish I could have just laughed at that. Yeah. But that was too personal for me. That was... That that across the line, like I crossed the line. Listen, listen. Saying about Muslim kids and this, that, and the other. I cr- that across the line for me. Yeah. Wait, as you say, message me or my family, call me a cunt. That's fine. Mm. 
So I messaged him saying, but you send did, me you, but you did yourself. You've crossed that line yeah. as well, haven't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. You've crossed that line, which is like, it, it's it's all about making amends now, right? Yeah. So what going forward have you been doing to make amends for your actions back well, then? Well, I'd I'd done all the courses that you had to do promoting human dignity, diversity courses. Yeah, um, this is good. Yeah, I've coached Blackhead. It took session with Blackhead, and I, I felt like n- not not that I, that was forced upon me because I'd I'd coach Blackheads anyway. Mm. But I I always felt like that was um oh, oh look at me, do you know what I mean? I'm not racist. I, look, I'm coaching Blackheads, you know what I mean? But I, I, I because I, I know that's that's a get out clause, and I've got yeah. black mates. Yeah. When people say, well, I've got a black friend. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter whether you've got a black friend. I, I or white felt friend. uneasy doing that. Yeah. Because I, I'm involved with a kid's football team. Well, I was recently. Yeah. yeah. With me mate, Peter McKnight. So I love coaching kids because I, I, I was once their age and I looked up to coaches and I hung on every word they said. So when I was coaching the, the black kids, it just, I just felt, I, I, I felt uneasy. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I just felt like I didn't deserve to be around them. Do you know what I mean? I felt like if they didn't really knew who I was, they wouldn't have liked me as a person. So I was never comfortable with myself. So that affects you, yeah. your self-esteem and your confidence in yeah. delivering Cause I, coaching I, sessions. I was looking at them and they, they were just innocent kids. Yeah. And I was thinking, and I've said things, you know what I mean, which would you know, ins- like basically insult them. Do you, do you regret like what you shared? Everything. Yeah. Everything, yeah. And you know, you, you, you feel it's important for you to to share with people out there that, you know, no matter how you feel, regardless of yeah. what's going on, right, it's not about an individual and then, it, well, it is an individual, but it's not a, it's, it's not to, to broaden it and mm-hmm. blame everybody else because basically that's what happens, isn't it? It's like, it's like, like you said before, Scousers are stereotyped. Yeah. They are, and they have been, and it's been well documented. Scouse, everyone's the same, mm-hmm. yeah? Muslim, everyone's the same. Yeah. But they're not. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're not. not. No. They're totally not. Some lovely people out there. I, I've, I've played them. with a couple of Muslim yeah. footballers. Yeah. As, especially, you know, it's, it's, it's... I think what we need to do go forward, right, is about teaching our kids... Yeah. ...the diversity. Yeah, well, like I say, as you know, I've got two kids of my own now, and obviously all my past mistakes... I didn't consider it at the time, which you wouldn't anyway. You, didn't you never have had kids. kids at the time, did you? So I one thing, but what will this hold in 20 years? It, when I've got kids, that's the last thing on my mind. But now I've got kids and all that, and I date I, I my past to scupper their future. Whether it be signing for the football team, when they say, when they say oh, who's your dad, Sean Tuck? And they say, yeah, that, that's my dad. Mm. And they say, well, look, we, 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 couldn't, we, we couldn't have you here because of your dad's views. They're not my views. I said them at the time, but if, if this was to um, obviously derail um, my kids' future and yeah. stuff, and the path they they're gonna take, I'd never forgive myself for that. And I, like, as I, as I've said, I've been searching for forgiveness since since I've done it. And some people have, some people w- w- will never forgive me. That's fine, and I have to carry that with me. I, I created the narrative. I I, I um, put myself uh, out I, there. I, look, I believe we all change, mate, and I believe yeah. we all get a, we all deserve a chance. Yeah. We do, we do. We all deserve a chance, Sean. There's no one. If you, if you one hundred percent feel it in your heart and you're sincere, you know. Mm. You've asked me, I want to come on and I want to put the record straight. Yeah. I've got kids. I never had kids at the time. I wasn't thinking. I was quite young. I was quite angry in my approach yeah. to delivering these posts and statuses yeah. all, all over Twitter. I've said things that I didn't mean, and in hindsight, you know, it's wrecked me life. Yeah, it, it, it has, yeah. It's wrecked me it's life. Sure. And this is the story you were telling me, and I thought, you know what, okay. Um, let's get you on and let you... So I'm, I'm asking you these questions, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't see anyone different from the next person. Yeah. Exactly how it is. I've been around different cultures and I've experienced a lot of different... Um, people, so it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It, it, I'm not yeah. asked. What yeah. I mean? At the time, I, I felt like it made me look hard and menacing. And now, it, did you feel inadequate as a man and insecure growing up? Did you feel like like you needed to to put yourself on a pedestal so, so people go, "Well, look, what a guy." Um, no, come on, let's it. Like, thinking what, about it, I'll be honest with you, Bill. I, I don't think so. 
No. I, w- I was always popular with mates. So mm. if we went in the pub, I was always the one who'd But you wasn't like short of the... I was always the one who'd do something to make people laugh. Yeah. I was always popular, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was always the, like the most outgoing one. Yeah. So I, I never felt like like I was like a loner or nothing like that. And um, But at the time when I'd done that, like obviously lads who, who, who I wouldn't know from Adam, I'd bump into them in West Ivy Village and I could see them looking at me. And I'd be thinking to milk, where are we going? And they come over and say, are you the lads who done them tweets? the other week I'd be like yeah can I get a picture with you and all I send it to one of my mates we were talking about you the other day and I'd be in pubs like that getting pictures with lads if I didn't know mm. so I was like I you felt all that self importance yeah yeah I, I, like people were going oh you're a legend so you. getting, you're getting, a scouser and getting pictures for all the wrong reasons yeah, yeah. you're a legend you are you're a scouser you. I'd be in cubicles with lads I didn't know yeah I put your hand out lad I'm one of them you're, yeah you're one they of were racist weren't they you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're one of us and I look back now and I wasn't a legend. I was a scouser, obviously. I'll, I'll always be a scouser. I was a le- I wasn't a legend. I was a dickhead. Mm. I, w- I was a proper dickhead. And it's good, that, you know. And it's it's good that you can admit it. Yeah, no. You know, I like your honesty and the fact that you. I've had more problems than one mate. Not just obviously what I've been the pick for. I've had gambling problems, thing yo problem like tr- problems with drugs. Stay, like when I say problems with drugs, I was never ever bad. But once I started, I didn't know when to stop. And I, I never wanted to go home. I just wanted to keep enjoying myself. And I've, you, I've always binge, would you be a binge user? Yeah, so I, I'd, I'd always come clean. I'd, I'd never, I, I was never in denial. I'd never say, I'm fucking not, yeah. I'm not. But my my dad was a gambler. So as you said, like, when you say, did you hear things as a kid, but, like racist remarks and whatever. I watched him gamble all his life. I watched him lose all his money. And then here I was in Big East with my wages. Going from 400 quid. It's like to say, we become, what, quid. We, we become what we're conditioned to see. Yeah, to 100 quid, to nothing, to having to borrow money, to pay, like, rent, and whatever else. And I was out of control, mate. Me, me, me irrational thinking was just, like, it was... I used to think the world was going to end today. Yeah. And that's how I'd live. I, I, I'd never, like, leave money in the bank thing. Well, what happens if something happens tomorrow and you need money? Fuck it. I get money off someone, do you know what I mean? Mm, live, look, live, 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 live in the now and yeah, it, for the moment. It's sad, it's sad, like, do you know what I mean? And I'm not thinking of the future at all. No, and, and, and that goes back and I say, I, I'll never make excuses, mate. I, I, I fucked up. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of um, the things I've wrote. And I can't take them back because I, I, they're out there. If anyone ever wants to Google my name, they'll, they'll, they'll find the negative stuff on me. I, I hope t- today's chat... Yeah. puts me in a different light obviously people who know me wouldn't wouldn't contest this because they know me yeah. so they, I, I'd need no justification to them of, of who I am well I was you're not you're not on it yet but to a wider audience yeah. I, I'd like people to um, think positively and like say plans for the future I, I, I want to like I've always wanted to run a marathon and like mm. say I put a bit of weight on the minute but um, to, and it, this is all in, all in like for to raise money for kids who've got nothing whether it's kids in third, third world countries, kids from this city at Christmas, because when I come down every morning, my kids have got everything. And the, the amount we spend is ridiculous. And, I, and on Christmas morning, I, I have to brave a smile. And my missus, inside them, I'm hurting and, that, and I, I come clean to my missus last Christmas. I said, um, I just feel unhappy. And she's like, what's up? I said, because my kids have got everything. I said, I know the kids haven't, and uh, that doesn't sit well with me. I, f- I felt dead low and all that. that me and my missus spent grand on, on the kids. Mm. And these kids out there who would get a t- probably one toy for £10 and they're over the moon. And I, I want everyone to feel like we're, not, we're on the same page. It's and lovely. every kid feels feels loved. And if I can even, I'll throw myself out of a plane. With, with a parachute I know a couple of people <laughs> would, want, would want me to do that without a parachute but I'll throw myself out of a plane to raise money I'll do anything I'll, I'll climb mountains anything because mm. I, I want to feel like I, I'm, I'm I'm doing something positive in my life do you know what I mean yeah. and even though I, I'm not in trouble no more and I, I like to think I'm a good dad to my kids I want to I want to help other people too yeah so you want to you, you want to make a difference yeah you know you, you've made a few mistakes which is okay so You've admitted that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, when I say it's okay, it's not okay. Yeah, obviously, no, it, it'll uh, never be okay as well. It'll never be okay. I mean, it's okay to 
so it'll be okay yeah if you know what i mean around yeah. it mm-hmm. well i say it's as you said it's it'll never be okay well in my eyes it never will if anyone if everyone would forgive me I, I, i'll still never forgive myself because this even so this time i'm sitting in the house now and i'm on my tea and i tell my mind without actually me saying it i'll be thinking of things i've done so you're living with guilt and i'm sinking into the couch I'm thinking, oh, did I write that? Yeah. Did I put that? So, like, obviously, when it, obviously, to get, to get the girl I'm written out on her, I'm engaged to her. Um, it's like, when you're moving on and, and you, like, you go to meet her family, I'm walking into the house and all that thing, and are these going to accept me? Are they going to bring me past up? So, you've got that constant feeling of being judged. Yeah, I go, I go into work with these black people about. It's, like, I was, yeah, I've got, got a problem with them, but it's on my mind. Do you know what I mean? If they're going to sit next to me and go, oh, why are you, mate? What's your name? And I go, Sean. And they come back, or they don't sit next to me next time in the, in the canteen. So you start feeling a little bit like something's being shared and well, the, 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 they, the they've, something. Got, they've got on to who I am. Someone said that that's that. Does lad. that make you feel a little bit isolated? Yeah. Or separate from everyone else? Yeah. I, I, I panic terribly over it. Do you know what I mean? I, I go out with my kids into town. They, they love public transport, so we go on bus rides, train rides, and if we're on the train, and these people are obviously different colour skin to me, mm. it's on my mind. So, like, I'd look at you now, and then look away, and then look at you again, if we weren't doing this. Yeah. You think, what, how come you looked at me like that? That's what I'm like. So I'm thinking, and obviously... So you're doing their thinking? Yeah. <laughs> For them? <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they probably just looked at me. Yeah. Don't well, have a clue who I am. And um, what's happened is because you've had this history yeah. of racism in your life yeah. that's being portrayed in the paper yeah. and it's being brief, but it's being like it's been streaked havoc up on your life. Yeah. You've regretted it and you've moved forward. Like, you're constantly living in that guilt. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't sound to me like you're enjoying your life mm. until you've, you've, you've shifted this. It seems like you need to get something. Yeah, I feel like yeah. a therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> Start crying, like, giving each yeah, other. Yeah, but it feels <laughs> like you need to, something needs to shift here yeah, because you can't keep beating yourself up for the rest of your life, can I you? No, no, because but you're not going to be a good father mm. to your children. No, if you're well, constantly having this on your mind. But I'm like that as a person, Bill. No, no one can beat me up more than more than I do myself. Well, well, you've nailed yourself to the cross. I don't know how many even, times even in this podcast, lad. And I think we need the bomby butt so yeah. off the cross. <laughs> but um, I. I like I'll sit there times and all that, mm. and I put words into my own head, and I I, I strip myself of all decency that that I feel like I've got, and make myself feel worthless at times, because of things I've done. I look at my kids, when I do good for them, and they're saying, "Daddy, like I love you, Daddy, and all that. You're, you're my best friend." I sit there and think, if only they knew what I'd done, which then makes me feel bad again. Do you know me little lad Tyler? He'll say to me in the house, Daddy, you be good or you will go to jail. Because he knows if you go to jail, you've been naughty. Hmm. And I've been to jail, obviously. And he doesn't he doesn't know that. Neither does my other son, Georgie. And uh, that's that's the next thing. Um, well, I hope they never find out. If they do, I'd like to have the conversation when I was when they're 18. You know, and it'll be an asshole conversation. That yeah, you, and it'll so be look, one... I made a mistake when I was a kid and say, look, I'd like to sort of be a sort of father figure that my dad was to me. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be as tough on them, but they'd be yours, and they'd be um, standards to, f- do you, do you, to do you, follow for them. You obviously hear a lot of feelings by posting them tweets mm. out there, you know, and that's going to happen. There's a lot. Of, I'm pretty sure you're not the only one out there that tweeted that stuff on the same day. No, but that was the thing, right, Bill? Everyone was writing what I was writing, the same things as well, mm. and. Um, because I was a footballer, I got nicked. Yeah. Do you sp- they made an example of you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not like saying, oh, you know, um, that was wrong on me. I'd, what happened to me, I deserved. So the, what did the paper say, professional footballer? Yeah. Sent to prison. Professional footballer, non, non, non-league striker, um, race aid striker, whatever else. Um, but the thing, thing what angered, angered me most of the time, whatever will be, will be with me. If I was going to jail, then so be it. I deserve to go. Yeah. But there was 
Muslims at the time, they were writing like um, like kill more Englishmen, similar to what I was writing, yeah. but the opposite. And their cases got to the bar of court, and I went to jail. And I'm not justifying why why I went to jail. I deserved to go, but I wasn't the only one. But I was the only one who, who did who went. And I just think with the justice system and all that, obviously to keep the peace and stuff. I think. I think that's why other people got away with it, because to 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 um, to pour cold water on any possible tension rising mm. from different faiths and communities. Well, we have been having a, a we've seen a lot of immigration over the years, yeah. especially recently, due to uh, a lot of refugees travelling in from mm-hmm. Afghanistan. Yeah, uh, but this. Bombing recently was from a was the guy from Syria and I think so yeah yeah, yeah. but I, I I look at that what happened the other day right and it goes back to the government right Bill I mean look I'm not Brad Pitt or yeah. Peter Andre but look 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 at the kipper Boris Johnson it it, it it wouldn't surprise me if his bare ties his shoelaces for him. Do you know what I mean? He looks like he's brushed his, his head with a wham bar. He's a Tory, so he's not popular with no, the Scousers no, anyway, I, is he? We don't like Tories from mm. the city. But you look at the kip of him. He looks like a tramp. <laughs> Johnny, he, you know, he looks like he's just rolled out of a three-day coke, coke bender. I've come out of parties looking like that with my hair everywhere, my tie-ons on. And he, he's running the country. He, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at Christmas if he got crayons and a colour number as one of his presents. And he's, he's making the decisions in this country. And then you, you've got, I mean, I'm going to go a little bit off sub- subject here. That, that Matt Hancock, he's telling us you're in lockdown. You can't go and see your mum. Um, no, um, when we, you can't go to different households. And there he is, fucking throwing his tongue down so, some woman's throat. Cheating on his wife, swapping saliva. They're telling us COVID's one of the big things. She cast on through saliva and through the mouth. And he's playing tongue tennis with some fucking sort. And, and we're being told. And, and going back to what I was saying about like Boris Johnson, the government's immigration, it feels like we're just getting the fucking piss taken out of us. Do you know what I mean? In our own country. Now, me and you went to Afghanistan or whatever else. I'd like to think that me and you'd be last on the list of priorities mm. of what we want or what we need for our families. And now they're coming over here. And um, if you want to come for a better life, great. You're welcome. But... When you're coming over here to cause like destruction and ruin our way of life and turn your nose up at, ev- at everything we do and get offended, I, d- I just think that's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like they're saying, like when football turns on, you can't put your flags up in case it offends. I mean, what, 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 what the fuck's going on? Not the British flag, the Union yeah. Jack. Well, or, or England flags. Mm. It, it, it offends others. But this is our country. If it offends, obviously, if it offends you. I, I, tell you, I totally agree that the fact that this is, this is our. Our country, right? Yeah. And we should be able to celebrate our flag. Yeah. Simple as. Right. Um, because that's how it is. It's 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 the, it's the UK. Yeah. yeah. I believe that totally. Mm. Mm. Uh, I disagree with the fact that we uh, are offending other people. Because mm. mm. I go to Brazil, go to Thailand, you go to Thailand, there's flags up and down the motorways. Yeah. It's it's because they're happy to yeah. celebrate their country. Yeah. I I think we're a bit of a dis. I don't know what it is with with the UK at the moment. It's all over the place. Yeah. I get what you're saying in in that respect. Well, when you go to other countries, you have to respect their way of life, don't you? Yeah. And their beliefs. But it just it just feels like that's a one way street. It's it, it's it's never on it, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now. And what do you think the answer is? What do you think the solution is to this problem? Well, then I I, I don't know. It's definitely but not. I know Boris Johnson. It's definitely not sweet, is it? No, I, I, no, I know. Yeah. Whatever you say, don't say fucking anything about Moscow bombing and gas in the mouth, because that ain't, that ain't the... the, the um, Definitely not the answer, is it? No, um, it's not. So, I don't know. You don't know who's who. Some people are getting deported and coming back under different identities. So, I don't know. Uh, I, know, I, know Boris, <coughs> I know Boris Johnson doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know his arse from his elbow, but... Some, something needs to be done. Yeah. Because... People are dying. I mean, luckily enough, that cab driver survived the other day. But it could, there could have been babies who were minutes, seconds, minutes, hours, days old. Could have been. Could have been. Um, that could have been total devastation. Yeah. With David Perry. And it still doesn't. It still doesn't. Um, 
to take anything away from what, what it was, it's still devastation. I mean, a man's life soon forever. Luckily enough, he survived. But it could it could have been a million times worse, mate. And I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I know I, I wrote tweets and all that. I never carried nothing out. These people are carrying it out. So, th- th- this was a women's hospital where these women lying there, like who've just gone through the mill to bring to bring you know bring another another life into the world. And they're under threat. Yeah, when they should be able to sit there and relax. Mm. And enjoy what what should be the happiest time of their life. Someone's turning up in a taxi with a with a bomb stops them. And I can't I can't work out why they do this. I know they're all radicalised and all that. And one of the things behind it, they say um, the jihad's extremists. But one of the things I've been told that they're told that um, they're told if they do it, they be is a seventy two virgins waiting for them on the other side. Have you ever been with a virgin? Fucking hell! I mean, if someone offered me that. Now, if they said 72 fucking women in the 50s, <laughs> it would be a bit of experience. No, I'd be willing to do something, but not no, slap a bomb to my chest, but I'd be willing to do something to, to go and meet 72 MILFs, yeah. do you know what I mean? <laughs> and get my ends away. But I just, I just, don't, I just don't see the, 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 the right thing in my heart. How, how thick can you be? If I said to you now that, you'd say, fuck off. As if, do you know what I mean? I'm gonna like do this, blow this building up, and then that's what you me understand. Because if, if it was that good of an offer, whoever's telling you why aren't they doing it? And I just don't know how they can be um, duped into doing that. It's evil and it, it's cowardice, like, do you know what I mean? You got the one that happened in Manchester. It, mm. These are girls, I, I've been to concerts, you will you will yourself, like, my heroes are Oasis. You no, know, when you're coming out of um, a gig, it's euphoric. Do you know what I mean? If you're like, you've been in the moment, songs that you've heard from your childhood have made your eyes fill up. The, um, the, the whole thing of it. And these kids will, will have seen, I can't remember who, who the concert was. I know Ariana, it was Ariana, Ariana, Ariana Grande, whatever yeah. the name is. These kids, these girls were ranging from 8 mm. to 16. I know what I mean? They, they, they look up to her like some sort of, you know, like I do Oasis and mm. whatever that. And then, and then, and then the families are um, preparing funerals. It is disgusting. It it's is wrong, mate. It's outrageous. It's wrong. That that sh- kind of stuff shouldn't go on. No, it does go on. It will go on. It will forever go on. It's been going on for decades, and hundreds and thousands Man. of years. It's it's just a, it's a war on religion, what, isn't it? Yeah. What you say about like what what you think the the answer to it all is? How can we change it? But when these things are happening, Bill. People are old nans and singing don't look back in anger. And that certainly isn't the answer. There needs to be a tougher approach. And I'm not saying do what any what I've said, because that's idiotic. But the people above us, the government, they need to be zero tolerance. You feel, yeah, so you're just feeling strongly and passionate about yeah. um, about what's going on in the world you're living and the kids that you've got are gonna having to live in that world yeah. and the fear that well, I don't feel that, and, and yourself, do you know what I mean? I mean, I've, I've checked into your past history and things you've been to, and, like, I think, how are you, how are you still even here today? And, like, your life's been a success. You, you've been, like, a stuntman for Sylvester Stallone, red carpets and all that, and you're just an everyday lad. And you, you've probably lived a team, but you, you've gone through some bad things in life. And I, I've been through, like, my own things, and I I'm never, good. ever feared anything, but my kid... I, I'm petrified yeah. of my kids. I'm quite open minded. Growing minded. up in this world. The more the, the older I've gotten, the more mature I've become. I'm quite open minded. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not as close minded these days. Um and I feel that we're blessed with a few short decades in life that we should yeah. be the best for the people around us and yeah. be of service to our communities and uh, 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 the people that need us, you know, and that's where I believe that you no, know, we should pass our, our love and yeah. empathy and compassion to the, the, yeah. the, the youth of today. And hopefully they'll grow up and flourish a lot better than we did. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to get battered as kids. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't happen now. You know, it's against the law. Well, back then, families had nothing. And yeah. as you said, um, you're taking an iron. We've, yeah, so we've took it, there's a lot of change going now on. Now you as a kid, it's like frowned upon. We're like, I, I don't hit my kids. I try and like be... A, like the way my dad was, my mum would give me the slipper 
And don't get me wrong, I've had a couple of wines. But uh, I just, I, I don't think nothing good comes from it, even though it never done me any harm. Mm. So I try and take my dad's approach, where my dad would go, Sean, and his eyes would go to it, and I knew it was time to pack it in. Yeah, enough was enough. Yeah, where I could, I could play me, man. And she'd go, and, I, and she'd slip at me, and I'd say, it doesn't hurt. Mm. But my dad go, hey, you! And yeah. take my breath away. So I'll try not to whip my kids, you know what I mean? But like, it's, if I've given one of them a smack, yeah. to say, that's naughty. And... Me, 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 Mrs. Classy she says, she says, don't, I say, I say, I say, I got this as a kid, do you know what I mean? And I, and I respected my, my, like, me mum and dad for that, do you know what I mean? Because I knew it was wrong, I said, no, but it, we've gone soft as a nation, and as parents, but time's changed, don't they, do you know what I mean? They do. I don't ever like one in it, my kids, no. if shouting at them's enough, yeah. that's the road I'll see. Because I don't believe in it, and I'm, cause I, I'm not a bully, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, if I was, if I want to hit someone, no, it'd be someone my own age, my own mm. size. I don't want to be hitting someone who's three and six. Yeah. I don't want them to look at me in later life thinking, you battered me when, yeah. when I was a kid. And then to have some sort of... When you're like quite vulnerable. Yeah, know, some really. resentment to me. That yeah, that's what happened all with all me. And all it's hard to do is do well. Brilliant. But so we come to the end of mm-hmm. the podcast, Sean, and I always say this at, at the end. Have you said, any pearls, obviously you've shared a lot, but is there any pearls or is there any... Any you'd say to a younger Sean so coming through the doors of life? And if you would, would you tell the audience there, please? Um, well, what was the show for now? How long have we got? Um, I'd say avoid avoid all the fucking the one signs, drugs, drink, and don't be going on social media like and things you shouldn't do. That's and obviously it. be a posit- positive influence to people around you, whether it's kids, loved ones, um, and just, just genuinely do well in life. Um, if you can help someone do it, and just in all be po- be a, of a positive good character and try and, try and be a good influence for people. Brilliant, and with mm. that, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Cheers. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Sure.